Gene editing systems have opened up a host of new ways to explore how life works and also have the potential to help improve human health, produce better crops and fight environmentally damaging pests. In this series, three young scientists from the University of Otago's Department of Biochemistry tell us about how they plan to use CRISPR gene editing in their diverse research projects. Well, my name is Soledad, mm -hmm. you call me Sol. I um, come from Buenos Aires, uh, that's the capital of Argentina. I just got a grant to st start studying the circadian rhythms in legumes in a small little legume that calls Medicago truncatula. Okay. So lentils are uh, legume, peas are legumes. They are actually a really uh, big source of protein for humans and it's very used for livestock, for feeding livestock, especially alfalfa for example. Sol wants to know how legumes adapt their circadian clock to the environment they grow in. One day we'll be able to use this to make plants better adapted to the new environments that climate change will bring and I measure something called leaf movement. So plants move even though we don't see them. So when you film the plants during continuous light, you will still see them opening and closing them, their leaves, but they will have their own rhythm that is set by their internal clock. And what I'm specifically looking for is one change in a nucleotide in the whole DNA that can help me relate how the plant uh, grow there and their genetics. Particularly look in the circadian clock. Once you measure all this leaf movement compared to the genomic and try to find responsible genes for this difference that you see, you try to mimic these changes using CRISPR-Cas gene editing. The plant that has A and change it to C with gene editing and see if changing this gene will make the plant behave like the other one that has a seed. Um, we put it in the plant using tissue culture techniques. Sol and her assistant Shireen put the CRISPR editing machinery into new plants using a special kind of bacteria, agrobacteria, that transfers DNA into plant cells. They cut some metacargo leaves into pieces and mix them with agrobacteria that have the CRISPR machinery encoded inside them incubated with the bacteria, the bacteria is able to go inside because of the cuts that you make to the leaf. <laughs> and that's, yeah, that's leaving them. Bacteria. They then put the pieces onto nutrient-rich cell culture plates. Infected cells start forming calluses on the side of the leaf pieces. So each of these squares that you see here are the explants that we took. That when they are in this media, they start developing calluses. Um, can you see the little white? Mm -hmm. That's embryos. Mm -hmm. And then, it's a little less human. There, do you see that from the explant, there is a little, you need to focus into there. There's a little plant. Eventually, the calluses start growing tiny plants with the altered gene inside them. So you get these plants that are ready to be moved to the soil because they have long roots. Um, yeah. Very cool. So this was a leaf. That yeah, was a leaf. <laughs> Once you try this and you actually see this, you can then translate it to other legumes. So you could find their own the Ashin that is on the motor box and try to see if when you change the machine.